High-density lipoprotein is one of the five major groups of lipoproteins, which, in order of molecular size, largest to smallest, are shylomicrons, very low-density lipoprotein, intermediate-density lipoprotein, low-density lipoprotein, and HDL. Lipoprotein molecules enable the transportation of lipids, such as cholesterol, phospholipids, and triglycerides, within the water around cells, including the bloodstream. Because of the high cost of directly measuring HDL and LDL protein particles, blood tests are commonly performed for the surrogate value, HDLC, that is the cholesterol associated with APOA1-HDL particles. In healthy individuals, about 30% of blood cholesterol, along with other fats, is carried by HDL. This is often contrasted with the amount of cholesterol estimated to be carried within low-density lipoprotein particles, LDL, and called LDLC. HDL particles remove fats and cholesterol from cells, including within artery wall atheroma, and transport it back to the liver for excretion or reutilization. Thus the cholesterol carried within HDL particles is sometimes called good cholesterol. Those with higher levels of HDLC tend to have fewer problems with cardiovascular diseases, while those with low HDLC cholesterol levels have increased rates for heart disease. Higher native HDL levels are correlated with better cardiovascular health. However, it does not appear that further increasing one's HDL improves cardiovascular outcomes. Structure and function, HDL is the smallest of the lipoprotein particles. It is the densest because it contains the highest proportion of protein to lipids. Its most abundant polypoproteins are APOA and APOA2. The liver synthesizes these lipoproteins as complexes of apolipoproteins and phospholipid, which resemble cholesterol-free flat and spherical lipoprotein particles. The complexes are capable of picking up cholesterol, carried internally, from cells by interaction with the ATP binding cassette transporter A1. A plasma enzyme called lecithin cholesterol acyltransferase converts the free cholesterol into cholesterol ester, which is then sequestered into the core of the lipoprotein particle, eventually causing the newly synthesized HDL to assume a spherical shape. HDL particles increase in size as they circulate through the bloodstream and incorporate more cholesterol and phospholipid molecules from cells and other lipoproteins, for example by the interaction with the ABCG1 transporter and the phospholipid transport protein. HDL transports cholesterol mostly to the liver or steroidogenic organs such as adrenals, ovary, and testes by both direct and indirect pathways. HDL is removed by HDL receptors such as scavenger receptor BI, which mediate the selective uptake of cholesterol from HDL. In humans, probably the most relevant pathway is the indirect one, which is mediated by cholesterol ester transfer protein. This protein exchanges triglycerides of VLDL against cholesterol esters of HDL. As the result, VLDLs are processed to LDL, which are removed from the circulation by the LDL receptor pathway. The triglycerides are not stable in HDL, but are degraded by hepatic lipase so that, finally, small HDL particles are left, which restart the uptake of cholesterol from cells. The cholesterol delivered to the liver is excreted into the bile and, hence, intestine either directly or indirectly after conversion into bile acids. Delivery of HDL cholesterol to adrenals, ovaries, and testes is important for the synthesis of steroid hormones. Several steps in the metabolism of HDL can participate in the transport of cholesterol from lipid-laden macrophages of atherosclerotic arteries, termed foam cells, to the liver for secretion into the bile. This pathway has been termed reverse cholesterol transport and is considered as the classical protective function of HDL toward atherosclerosis. However, HDL carries many lipid and protein species, several of which have very low concentrations but are biologically very active. For example, HDL and its protein and lipid constituents help to inhibit oxidation, inflammation, activation of the endothelium, coagulation, and platelet aggregation. All these properties may contribute to the ability of HDL to protect from atherosclerosis, 
and it is not yet known which are the most important. In addition, a small subfraction of HDL lends protection against the protozoan parasite Trypanosoma brucei brucei. This HDL subfraction, termed Trypanosum lytic factor, contains specialized proteins that, while very active, are unique to the TLF molecule. In the stress response, serum amyloid A, which is one of the acute phase proteins and an apolyper protein, is under the stimulation of cytokines, and cortisol produced in the adrenal cortex and carried to the damaged tissue incorporated into HDL particles. At the inflammation site, it attracts and activates leukocytes. In chronic inflammations, its deposition in the tissues manifests itself as amyloidosis. It has been postulated that the concentration of large HDL particles more accurately reflects protective action, as opposed to the concentration of total HDL particles. This ratio of large HDL to total HDL particles varies widely and is measured only by more sophisticated lipoprotein assays using either electrophoresis or neuron MR spectroscopy methods, developed in the 1990s. Subfractions Five subfractions of HDL have been identified. From largest to smallest, the types are 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B, and 3C. Major lipids in body The lipids are a heterogeneous group of compounds which are relatively insoluble in water and soluble in nonpolar solvents. TC, TG, and phospholipids are the major lipids in the body. They are transported as complexes of lipid and proteins known as lipoproteins. TGs, TGs are formed by combining glycerol with three molecules of fatty acid. TGs, as major components of VLDL and Shylomicrons, play an important role in metabolism. When the body reaches fatty acids as an energy source, the hormone glucagon signals the breakdown of the TGs by lipase to release free fatty acids. TGs are water-insoluble, non-polar neutral fats. These are not the structural components of biological membranes. TG synthesis and storage mostly occurs in liver and adipose tissue. FFA and glycerol must be activated prior to the synthesis of TGs into acyl-CoA glycerol-3 phosphate respectively. Cholesterol, the name cholesterol originates from the Greek chol and stereos, and the chemical suffix ol for an alcohol. It is an essential structural component of cell membrane where it is required to establish proper membrane permeability and fluidity. In addition, cholesterol is an important component for the manufacture of bile acids, steroid hormones, and vitamin D. Although cholesterol is an important and necessary molecule, a high level of serum cholesterol is an indicator for diseases such as heart disease. About 20-25% to of total daily cholesterol production occurs in the liver. Phospholipids Phospholipids are TGs that are covalently bonded to a phosphate group by an ester linkage. Phospholipids perform important functions including regulating membrane permeability and in maintaining electron transport chain in mitochondria. They participate in the reverse cholesterol transport and thus help in the removal of cholesterol from the body. They are involved in signal transmission across membranes and they act as detergents and help in solubilization of cholesterol. Lipoprotein, these contests of a central core of a hydrophobic lipid encased in a hydrophilic coat of polar phospholipid, free cholesterol and a polypoprotein. There are four main goals of lipoprotein, differing in the relative proportion of the core lipids and in the type of apoprotein. A eurocent chylomicrons a eurocent BLDLC particles a eurocent IDLC particles a eurocent LDLC particles a eurocent HDLC particle a eurocent lipoprotein LP A epidemiology men tend to have noticeably lower HDL levels with smaller size and lower cholesterol content than women men also have an increased incidence of atherosclerotic heart disease Alcohol consumption tends to raise HDL levels, and moderate alcohol consumption is associated with lower cardiovascular and all-cause mortality. Recent studies confirm the fact that HDL has a buffering role in balancing the effects of the hypercoagulable state in type 2 diabetics and decreases the high risk of cardiovascular complications in these patients. Also, 
The results obtained in this study revealed that there was a significant negative correlation between HDL and activated partial thromboplast in time. Epidemiological studies have shown that high concentrations of HDL have protective value against cardiovascular diseases such as ischemic stroke and myocardial infarction. Low concentrations of HDL increased the risk for atherosclerotic diseases. Data from the landmark Framingham Heart Study showed that, for a given level of LDL, the risk of heart disease increases tenfold as the HDL varies from high to low. On the converse, however, for a fixed level of HDL, the risk increases threefold as LDL varies from low to high. Even people with very low LDL levels are exposed to increased risk if their HDL levels are not high enough. Estimating HDL by associated cholesterol, clinical laboratories formally measured HDL cholesterol by separating other lipoprotein fractions using either ultracentrifugation or chemical precipitation with divalent ions such as Mg2+, then coupling the products of a cholesterol oxidase reaction to an indicator reaction. The reference method still uses a combination of these techniques. Most laboratories now use automated homogeneous analytical methods in which lipoproteins containing UPUB are blocked using antibodies to UPUB, then a calorimetric enzyme reaction measures cholesterol in the non-blocked HDL particles. HPLC can also be used. Subfractions can be measured and have clinical significance. The measurement of APUA reactive capacity can be used to measure HDL cholesterol but is thought to be less accurate. Recommended ranges, the American Heart Association, NIH and NCEP provides a set of guidelines for fasting HDL levels and risk for heart disease. High LDL with low HDL level is an additional risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Measuring HDL concentration and sizes, as technology has reduced costs and clinical trials have continued to demonstrate the importance of HDL, methods for directly measuring HDL concentrations and size at lower costs have become more widely available and increasingly regarded as important for assessing individual risk for progressive arterial disease and treatment methods. Electrophoresis measurements, since the HDL particles have a net negative charge and vary by size. Electrophoresis measurements have been utilized since the 1960s to both indicate the number of HDL particles and additionally sort them by size. Larger HDL particles are carrying more cholesterol. NMR measurements, the newest methodology for measuring HDL particles, available clinically since the late 1990s uses nuclear magnetic resonance fingerprinting of the particles to measure both concentration and sizes. This methodology was pioneered by researcher Jim Utvoss and the North Carolina State University Academic Research spin-off company and dramatically reduced the cost of HDL measurements. Optimal total and large HDL concentrations, the HDL particle concentrations are typically categorized by event rate percentiles based on the people participating and being tracked in the MESA trial, a medical research study sponsored by the United States National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute. The lowest incidence of atherosclerotic events over time occurs within those with both the highest concentrations of total HDL particles and the highest concentrations of large HDL particles. Multiple additional measures, including LDL particle concentrations, small LDL particle concentrations, VLDL concentrations, Estimations of insulin resistance and standard cholesterol lipid measurements are routinely provided in clinical testing. Memory Fasting serum lipids have been associated with short-term verbal memory. In a large sample of middle-aged adults, low HDL cholesterol was associated with poor memory and decreasing levels over a five-year follow-up period were associated with decline in memory. Increasing HDL levels, diet and lifestyle Certain changes in lifestyle may have a positive impact on raising HDL levels, decreased intake of simple carbohydrates, weight loss, nicine supplementation, aerobic exercise, smoking cessation, mild to moderate alcohol intake, addition of soluble fiber to diet, consumption of omega-3 fatty acids such as fish oil or flax oil, increased intake of some saturated fats, consumption of medium-chain triglycerides such as caproic acid, caprylic acid, capric acid, and lauric acid. 
removal of trans fatty acids from the diet, consumption of cannabis has been speculated to have a positive impact on the HDLC level. However, a study performed in 4635 patients demonstrated no effect on the HDLC levels, the mean HDLC values in control subjects, past users and current users were 53.4, 53.9 and 53.9 mg per deciliter, respectively. Most saturated fats increase HDL cholesterol to varying degrees and also raise total and LDL cholesterol. A high fat, adequate protein, low carbohydrate ketogenic diet may have similar response to taking nicene as described below through beta hydroxybutyrate coupling the nicene receptor 1. Drugs, while higher HDL levels are correlated with cardiovascular health, no increase in HDL has been proven to improve health. In other words, while high HDL levels might correlate with better cardiovascular health, specifically increasing one's HDL might not increase cardiovascular health. Pharmacological therapy to increase the level of HDL cholesterol includes use of fibrates and nicene. Fibrates have not been proven to have an effect on overall deaths from all causes, despite their effects on lipids. Nicene increases HDL by selectively inhibiting hepatic diacylglycerol acyl transferase 2, reducing triglyceride synthesis and VLDL secretion through a receptor HM74 otherwise known as Nicene receptor 2 and HM74A GPO109A, Nicene receptor 1. Pharmacologic Nicene doses increase HDL levels by 10 a euro 30%, making it the most powerful agent to increase HDL cholesterol. A randomized clinical trial demonstrated that treatment with nicene can significantly reduce atherosclerosis progression and cardiovascular events. However, nicene products sold as no flush, that is not having side effects such as nicene flush, do not contain free nicotinic acid and are therefore ineffective at raising HDL, while products sold as sustained release may contain free nicotinic acid, but some brands are hepatotoxic. Therefore the recommended form of nicene for raising HDL is the cheapest, immediate release preparation. Both fibrates and nicene increase artery toxic homocysteine, an effect that can be counteracted by also consuming a multivitamin with relatively high amounts of the B vitamins, however multiple European trials of the most popular B vitamin cocktails, trial showing 30% average reduction in homocysteine, while not showing problems have also not shown any benefit in reducing cardiovascular event rates. A 2011 Nicene study was halted early because patients adding Nicene to their statin treatment showed no increase in heart health, but did experience an increase in the risk of stroke. In contrast, while the use of statins is effective against high levels of LDL cholesterol, most have little or no effect in raising HDL cholesterol. However, Several statins, rosuvastatin and batavastatin, have been demonstrated to significantly raise HDL levels. As statins are associated with side effects like myopathy which causes sore muscles, patients who experience these side effects may need to be given a lower dose of statin to control cholesterol. Cannabis and unadjusted analyses, past and current marijuana use were associated with lower levels of fasting insulin, glucose, HOMAIR. BMI, and hemoglobin A1c but either current or past marijuana use was not associated with higher HDLC levels. Leveza has been shown to increase HDLC. However, the best evidence to date suggests it has no benefit for primary or secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease. Magnesium supplements raise HDLC. Apu A1 Milano, the most effective proven HDL agent, is in commercial production by a Canadian company, Symbiosis, but as of 2010 may still be several years away from clinical availability. See also, asymmetric dimethylogenin, cardiovascular disease, cholesterol ester storage disease, endothelium, lipid profile, low-density lipoprotein, lysosomal acid lipase deficiency, references, notes. External links Adult Treatment Panel 3 Full Report A Euro National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, ATP 3 Update 2004 A Euro National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, HDL, The Good, But Complex, 
cholesterol a euro harvard heart letter hdl cholesterol at lab tests online